Good morning. I know it's a bit dark. Isn't this wallpaper lovely? I like it. Um, it is the 10th of December. It's 7 o'clock in the morning because I can't seem to sleep in. <laughs> We're not doing anything today apart from meeting some James's friends tonight. Um, so it's going to be finally a quiet day. I'm staying in um, James's family where me we're just kind of chilling out, being home and um, lots of tea and biscuits. <laughs> I'm going to be doing some knitting. Um, yeah, so today's going to be a quiet day. So yeah, I want <laughs> I wanted to thank everyone for their suggestions of teams that we should like. On day eight, we went to um, Spurs Stadium. It was really funny. <laughs> I was like, when Jay said it, I was like, oh, goodness. Because <laughs> there's so many different teams. <laughs> but it turns out that James actually has a New England Patriots jersey already. I don't know where he got it. Um, and also... I think by logo, I like the uh, the Buccaneers because they're a pirate ship. They've got a pirate ship on there. I think they're from Florida. They're so funny. Although the Green Bay Packers, are, the only reason I know them is because of Pitch Perfect, <laughs> which is another solid reason to like things. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's funny. But, um... So I want to thank everyone for their <laughs> for their suggestions of their favorite team, <laughs> and uh, I'd love to. I just I really want to thank everyone who's been watching the Vlogmas, because um, my subscriber numbers have just totally jumped. Thank you so much. You're so sweet. Um, yeah, I think I've got another four hundred or four hundred and fifty viewers just from Vlogmas. So thank you so much, you guys. You're you're super nice. I hope you're enjoying it. I am really enjoying it. In case you don't know me, in case you haven't um, met me before, in case Vlogmas was the first time you ever met me, hi, my name is Grace. Um, I am an Irish girl who lives in Ireland at the moment. Um, I lived, I started the podcast when I was in Australia, when I was in uh, traveling around the world, and then I. Um, I came back to Ireland and got a job and I've been living there for the last year and a half, almost two years. So um, yeah, I have a little yarn dyeing business called Babbles Yarns. Um, I run some retreats in Ireland, knitting retreats uh, in Tipperary. I'm hoping to grow that a little bit next year. Um, and James is coming in with my tea. James is my partner, he's from Barnstable. I used to live and work in Exeter in Devon. Uh, I'm a radiographer. I use x-rays to see inside people's bodies and see what's wrong. I do CT and um, yeah, I've been doing that for about five years. I trained up in Edinburgh and I love Edinburgh and we go back every year for EYF as well and to see my friends from Edinburgh too. I would move to Edinburgh in a heartbeat, but you never know with Brexit what way it's going to go. So Ireland is um, home. So. Oh, he's so sad. Hi, James. Oh, a tray. Oh my God, this is the best. Oh, the crappy flash, just so you can see this beautiful, <coughs> beautiful breakfast. Thanks, James. Don't worry about it. Oh my God. It's so shiny. Just looking out there. Yeah, thanks. Um,
Hello! So, um, today's been a lovely day of just sitting and knitting and it's been really, really nice. Um, so I thought I would just um, take a few minutes out of this afternoon before the light fades completely to um, show you some of the things that I've um, I've got over the last couple of days. It's not been too crazy, but it's not the last spending spree. I'm going to John Arbin tomorrow and um, yeah, I'm planning on buying a lot of spinning stuff. So yeah. So I'm hoping to free up some space in my suitcase um, from some of the Christmas presents that we brought over for um, friends and family. So yeah, hopefully I can, I've only got 15 kg and that includes like all of our clothes and stuff. And normally I travel so light. I, ever since I've become a knitter, I don't travel so light anymore. Oopsie. Well, it's because I bought, I brought a James's jumper with us. So you would have seen it when um, I had tested it but I have seamed it since so I've seamed it and the, it is bigger in the back than in the front and I had seamed it so that the edges were evenly done all the way across but the neck was too wide then so what I did was I actually took it all out and it fits in perfectly across the back neck now before it was kind of doing this gapey thing like that was his back that was the neck and so I tightened it up a little bit and now it sits really flush on his, on his neck so that's great. So I somehow I haven't done anything about the sleeves because I'm a little bit nervous about it but um and I don't have my notes from my class that I took with Isabel Kramer with me so I might wait until I'm home to do that um which means that I'm definitely not going to have it finished for Christmas. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> but I did get this far. So that's that. So yeah, <laughs> I'll make him wear it as a vest for Christmas day and then carry on. <sighs> yeah, so, um, well the first woolly place that I went was Wild and Woolly and I got this beautiful, you may have seen, you saw it in the vlog anyway, definitely, but you saw this lovely little sweater box. So I got this um, little kit. It's got four different sweater patterns in there. So you keep this little um twine and you use that as your garland so yeah that's brilliant uh, the kit comes with some little clothes pegs to to um hold your garments and it comes with four skeins of i can't remember if it's let me find out these are the four little sweater patterns that it comes with little it's called the matchbox sweater project a little knitting adventure in four parts by Anna Feldman and Jane Lithgow and oh it's so cute so it's got actually it's got four uh, different designs so it's got a raglan jumper it's got a rounded yoke it's got a drop sleeve and then it's also got a um, I don't know what this one is. It might be a certain sleeve construction. Let me find out. Lindsay. So it's a Guernsey style jumper. It's knit from the bottom up. First back and front welts are worked separately before being joined in the round. The back and front of the yoke are then separated work flat, exactly like James's jumper, before rejoining at the shoulders so the neck can be worked in the round. Finally, the sleeves are picked up from the body edge and worked in the round to the cuffs. So it's kind of like a drop shoulder, I think. They're up straight, there's no shaping, it's not a set in sleeve. But it's kind of a Guernsey style, a little red, little red jumper. So cute. And they're basically um, like little, um, so I'll read you the description. The Matchbox Sweater Project. I'd love to make a sweater, but isn't it really hard? I really only do scarves. I've had possibly 50 to 100 comments on these videos that you're watching right now on people who've never done a garment and they're scared, okay? So this project is fabulous. 
because it's determined to rescue nervous knitters from their scarf-shaped hole, the Wild and Woolly Sweater Club was born. Now about to start its fifth round, we're proud to say we've safely delivered 25 new sweater knitters to East London, each of whom is keeping much warmer and knitting more adventurously than they ever thought possible. Emboldened by our pullover progeny, we've decided it's time to take our message of sweater knitting comfort and joy to the next level by scaling things right down. So they obviously run courses on how to knit sweaters. With a nod towards the Lens Lesney Matchbox, car Matchbox Cars factory of Hackney Marshes, we've designed four miniature sweaters. Each one follows a different construction and has all the details and techniques that you'd find in a fully grown sweater, just on a much tinier scale. <laughs> the patterns have been carefully thought through to be manageable by anyone who can cast on and knit and purl, and who doesn't mind searching out the odd online tutorial to fill their technique gaps. Those are sweaters you can knit, and even more importantly, finish and then start another. They're so tiny, you'd, you'd finish them in like two hours. Each sweater uses eight grams of four ply wool so they can easily be made out of scraps. Alternatively, the Matchbox Sweater Project kit has enough wool in a choice of four seasonal color combinations to make 12 sweaters plus a few mini treats exclusive, plus a few mini treats exclusive to the kits. So these are the colors that I chose. They are the Jameson and Smith in the jumper weight or four ply. And are you surprised by any of these colors? I sure am not. So this is shade 65. This is a beautiful chartreuse in shade FC11 mix. Uh, this is a gray, which is shade 27. And this is a kind of a black in shade 81. So comes in this beautiful little package box. Um, they are enchanting as bunting, delightful as tree decorations, effortlessly stylish as knitwear for chilly dolls or stuck on a card. They are apt to make someone you love smile a lot. Welcome to the smallest knitting adventure in Clapton. We hope you enjoy the ride. I thought it was just such a lovely little memory of, of Wild and Woolly, of the shop there. And um, it was just super adorable. So you can make these out of scraps. I'm hoping to use the wool here. Um, the only thing I didn't get was needles. I should have got the needles there because I really want to cast one on right now. They're so cute. Um, yeah, so what comes in the kit? So you've got your four yarns, you've got your black and gray, and you've got your yellow and your green. You get a little, beautiful little soak um, um, sachet. You get a lovely, oh, this this smells like mulled wine. Here, have a sniff. Isn't it lovely? It's so Christmassy. And you get little um, clothes pegs. I think these are little clothes pegs inside here. Wild and woolly clothes pegs. You also get this adorable little bag, little wild and woolly bag to hold everything in. It's just the cutest little project. It's adorable. So. Uh, while I was there, I was with Ellie and Ellie was showing me this new um, little book uh, mini yarn guide London and I kind of wish I had this before I I'm just gonna tilt you down a little bit because my knees are sitting sore <laughs> so um, I kind of wish I had this before I was going to London so what it does is it separates out London into different yarn shops and also different um, dyers and things that live in London so it has this little map where all the shops are and I didn't even know that were that many but I suppose there there are really um, so you've got North and Central London, you've got Fringe, the Handweaver Studio and Gallery. I really want to go to that next time. Um, we went to, I, I've been to Liberty Loop um, and now I've been to Wild and Woolly. Uh, I want to go to the Village Haberdashery, Fabrications, Knit with Attitude. I really want to go there. Knitworks London, I've not heard of that one. I've not heard of Sharpworks, Stag and Bow. And I really wanted to go to Tribe Yarns, but I just couldn't get out there. So it's just a really interesting little guide and it comes with, so it does lots of different um, kind of shop profiles and it also does uh, kind of um, in different areas of London. Like Ellie um, has a pattern in here and she's based in North London, North East London, I suppose, I assume. So, she is she goes for the underground mittens and they've got this little the underground symbol on the cuff it's really cute um then you've got your east london east london yarn and they do a little um 
a talk about the Dyer Third Vault Yarns, who's based in East London, and then also the Wool Kitchen. We have a little description about them. And they've, I think they've also got the Travel Knitter. Oh yeah, she's there as well. Little, little write up, it's really cute. And then you've got the London Life and Hat Co by Alison Thistlewood, which is a really super chunky, big, really quick present, I'd say. Uh, South London, then you've got Sharp Work, Stag and Bow, Easy Knits is in South London. All oh, right, lovely. Do you know, you're just learning about these people that you've heard about. Oh, Helen Stewart has a beautiful, um, um, what's it called? What's this called? A shawl called London Lines. And it's a beautiful shawl with big tassels. Lovely. Oh, they're like plaited tassels, are they? Or is it a cable? I need to have a little look closer at that. I know, I think it's just the way the yarn is. Um, yeah, and then there's one more pattern by Rachel Brown called the Glass House Shawl. And that's a really wide kind of um, chunky lace knitted shawl. So the book costs 10 pounds and uh, you get your Ravelry PDF version as well. So it's all in this little book. So it's a really, really cute little guide, yarn guide to London. Um, I'd say you can, uh, I wonder is it actually available on, it must be, it must be available on Ravelry, the actual book. So if you are coming to London and you're planning to go to the yarn shops, um, it might be worth having a little look um, and the patterns you get, how many patterns do you get? Ellie's. You get two shawls, two, a, cat, a hat and a cowl and a mitten. So for 10 pounds. So that's not too bad. If you're spending four, four pounds or six pounds on a, on a pattern, you're getting, what is that? Four, five patterns really, because a hat and a cowl is quite, you know, it's two separate things. So you're getting five patterns for the price of two, maybe three. So not too bad. When I was at Wild and Woolly, James went to Platform 9 and 3 quarters. And so James got a wand at, um, at <clears throat> the Harry Potter world. He got Albus Dumbledore's wand. And I used to have a wand, but I sold it when I was kind of getting... I had to move, like, um, everything out, really. I was moving country, so I, I kind of sold everything. So I had Sirius Black's wand. But James went and he chose a wand for me. He chose Luna Lovegood's wand, which is so elegant and pretty. And I'm like, can I like, this would be great for digging out yarn. I'm not gonna do that. These cost about 30 pounds and they are really cute. I think Luna might have smaller hands than I do though. Swish and flick, <laughs> but it's really, really sweet. And it feels really heavy, like, you know? You wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of a witch, I'm telling you that much. And then yesterday, <clears throat> I went to a yarn story in Bath, and I got some lovely yarn that I've actually been eyeing up since Edinburgh two years ago, 2017, when uh, a yarn story, when Karen first, um, Came out when they came out with their first yarn line, uh, Walcott, and they hadn't actually dyed anything up yet. Uh, so it was all kind of the, the, the plain colours, but every single garment I touched was like butter. And I, I you know, I've been watching it. Um, it's called Walcott Yarns, is the, is the, the yarn. Uh, Walcott Yarns in the Opa space, which is a sport weight. So this is a 70% Falkland Merino, 30% baby alpaca, 100% awesome. <laughs> so, um, hand wash only made in the UK. Yeah, walcottyarns.com. So I got a beautiful teal. And what color is this? Cove. The color is cove. Beautiful. Oh, lovely. It's, it, it just glows. You can see that, right? See how it's shining? Oh, it's beautiful. But all of the garments that I've seen now, I've seen these garments possibly four times now. I saw them come, I saw them come to Woolen, I saw them at Edinburgh twice, and I saw them today, and they hold up so well. The yarn is just, it, it has this perfectly smooth drape, but it's so warm and soft, and nothing looks like it's fallen out of shape, you know? It's, yeah, 
really good stuff and so nice. So I bought one and I was thinking I might do the tied knots hat or I might do a magnolia hat or some sort of cabled hat. It really lends itself to cables quite a lot. So to go with that, I bought my first set of Luca. 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 Needles. Needles. <laughs> I don't know. I tried. Um, so these are Driftwood Fixed Circular Needles. They are all Luca products products are guaranteed for life against manufacturer's defects all right so if there's any kind of um you know problems with the join or anything you can send them back but i say if you sit on them they would break they would probably wouldn't replace that but um yeah so these are my luca needles they're quite light and they're rounded and they're going to go with this project so that is my plan. So cute. I'm kind of, I really like small projects at the moment. So before I cast on that though, I have to cast off something. We'll get to that in a minute. I also bought a couple of different things while I was there at, um, I bought two more things while I was at a yarn story. I saw these, I picked these up and I absolutely love them. They, this comes in this tiny little tin from Coco Knits. I got the triangular stitch markers because they're so cute. Look at them, they're so cute. So adorable. Little triangular. So I have no idea what they're gonna be like, but I love them. <laughs> it's so tiny. And I also got this thing, which I hadn't seen before. It's from the same company that does soap, but it's called Flatter. Now I do a lot of ironing, Ugh, I hate ironing, and apparently this makes it so much easier to iron because my uniform is just like the worst. So, and also it can be used to like just kind of refresh garments, so shawls and things that you don't necessarily want to wash all the time, or jumpers and things like that. So it's flat out fabulous. The smooth operator leaves fabric sleek, soft and static free. Made with plant derived and renewable ingredients, soft mist sprayer for an even distribution, no sulfates, no silicones, no SLS or S L E S, and definitely no wrinkles. <laughs> Use a steam or dry iron of recommended fabric settings, spray entire garment evenly, repeat as needed for desired stiffness. So it doesn't use any starch, there's no starch, but it um it acts like starch. So it's called flatter. And um yeah, it might make my ironing a bit more. Or a bit less painful. Um, yeah, I've blathered on quite a lot now. So we're just going to um, hang out at James's house. Uh, James's couple of friends coming over. Um, so yeah, I'm going to sign off here, and I'll see you tomorrow at John Arman. Woo!